the way we act doesn't just impact how others see us, it also impacts how we see ourselves. So I, I wasn't aware this was a comedic uh, debate, but, but I, was, uh, I was only told about this about six months ago, so I didn't have much time to prepare like all of these guys over here. We're currently living in a world in which Joe Biden is pretending not to be old, Rishi Sunak is pretending to still have a chance, and a retired YouTuber who you may have seen in a KSI film is standing in front of the Oxford Union. <laughs> if that doesn't scream fake, I don't know what does. I'm literally faking not to be nervous right at this very moment. And to get over my nerves, I'm imagining Count Binface taking a massive shit. <laughs> yeah, that's, that really helped, thank you. Um, well, I'm also picturing the moment each of you were told by your teachers to apply to Oxford because they didn't think you had a chance at Cambridge. My mom told me not to say that one. She said you guys get very offended by that kind of stuff here. <laughs> the Cambridge Dictionary definition, and there is a Cambridge Dictionary, by the way, <laughs> of the word fake is someone who is not what or who they claim to be. Fake it till you make it, however, is a very well-known saying which means to act with confidence and as if you are successful, even if you aren't yet, in order to achieve success eventually. When I first started my YouTube channel in 2010, my videos got around five views. They also had a few hate comments <laughs> and a couple of dislikes. So that's nearly 40%. Well, that actually is 40% if I do my math correctly. This was before you uh, couldn't see dislikes. Um, and so to combat this, I created 20 fake accounts which, secur which secured me 20 likes per video no matter what. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I thought the Rishi Sunak comment would, make, would get a clap, not that one. <laughs> um, anyway, I had a bunch of adoring comments, like, why are your eyes so blue in this video? And even though I don't know you, I feel like you, I do. <laughs> this was the opposite of a Russian troll farm. But it made the real viewers who eventually came across my channel believe that they weren't alone in somehow liking this really bad content. And over time, I was able to replace the 20 fake accounts with 6 million real subscribers. Fake it till you make it, baby. Woo! Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, since we're in Oxford, I expect a, a large group of you to put up your hand. So put up your hand if you have an iPhone. Okay, cool. Great. Uh, the guy who created those went from someone who dropped out of Reed College and digged calligraphy to co-founding the world's first, second, or third most valuable company, depending on the week. Um, Apple Intelligence has really helped them recently, but in 1976, Steve Jobs started Apple in his parents' garage with Steve Wozniak, or the other Steve. When they created their first prototype, the main Steve was just 21 years old. How annoying is that? Many of you are 21 years old and you're still here. <laughs> Yet he still managed to arrange a meeting with this guy called Paul Tyrrell, who owned one of the first personal computing stores in the world. In true fake it till you make it style, Jobs pitched the Apple One as a groundbreaking, groundbreaking product which could be shipped at scale, when in fact it was just a single prototype made in his parents' garage. He also act acted like Apple was a well-established company when they had no production facilities, Yet Paul agreed to purchase 50 fully assembled Apple One computers at $500 each, totaling $25,000, which was a lot of money before Liz Trust destroyed the economy. <laughs> Apple, was equipped, Apple wasn't equipped to meet this order. They had no manufacturing line, no assembly team, and no funds to buy the components. So the main Steve sold his VW van. How annoying, he's 21 years old, what a hipster. The absolute worst. And the other Steve sold his calculator. Apparently they were expensive back then. They convinced electronic suppliers to extend them credit and set up a makeshift production line in the garage. They worked around the clock to assemble 50 Apple One computers and that poor guy I mentioned earlier actually was satisfied with the order. This marked the beginning of Apple's transformation from questionable garage startup to a real company. The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who actually do. That's the Steve Jobs comment, I think. The way, they act doesn't, the, way we act doesn't just the way we act doesn't just impact 
how others see us. It also impacts how we see ourselves. So can I ask you all to quickly smile for me, please? More, please. Thank you. Okay, now please stand up. Thank you. This one's gonna be difficult for you, Binface. Um, but put your hands on your hips like Superwoman. Thank you very much. You're not gonna cancel me tonight. <laughs> Are you feeling happier and more confident? Come on, of course you are. All right. Now, can you touch the ear of the person to your right? Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, that also has nothing to do with my argument. I was just testing if you're more suggestible than you look. <laughs> Sit down. I did that same thing on the Cambridge lot and they got it before they did the, the ear touching stuff. So that's, that's pathetic. Um, in 2010, before a few of you were potentially born. No, wait. Okay, no, sorry. Wrong joke. Again, my mom told me not to make that joke. She said, stop offending them. Um, researchers measured levels of testosterone and cortisol before and after posing. They assessed, they assessed participants' feelings of power and risk taking and those who adopted high power poses experienced an increase in testosterone levels and a decrease in cortisol levels. They were more confident and less stressed, feeling more powerful and in control, and they were also more likely to gamble. Yeah. All right, I'm a, I'm a, shout out to gambling, wow. The study concluded that, the, that adopting body language can actually lead to a physiological and psychological change. I'm so happy I was able to pronounce those at Oxford. The en they enhance confidence. Right, I've given you anecdotal um, evidence about the two Steves and a dodgy study about how power posing can make you want to gamble more. What else, what else do I have here? Are you already satisfied or can I, I've got one more thing here. For legal reasons, <coughs> oh wow, okay. This story may or may not be true. When I was 16, living in South Africa, this was around 2010. Wow, I'm old. I really wanted to go to this cool nightclub. All the Hottest 17 year olds were there. <laughs> Wait, that, that sounds inappropriate saying that at the age of 30 in the Oxford Union. But I was referring to how I felt back then. Every time I went, the bouncer rejected me and told me to come back when you have some hair on your balls. <laughs> or when I could prove I was of age. Wait, who am I impersonating myself or him? Okay. Or, or come back when I could prove I was of age with an ID. I had no chance of growing any hair down there for another five years. <laughs> so I had to go with a second suggestion. There are a bunch of good fake driving license websites out there, but they costed more than I had budgeted for my criminal activity. So a friend told me the bouncer sometimes accepts signed photocopies of IDs in case people don't want to bring their real ones out with them. I was quite a lazy teenager, so I turned up with a pathetic looking photocopy of a fake ID. My name was Michael Jackson and I was 32 years old. I literally took the first fake copy of a South African ID I could find on Google, we didn't have much options in South Africa, um, and stuck an image of myself on it. The same bouncer who knew I wasn't 18 took one look at the ID and said, fair enough, enjoy your night. <laughs> he knew I was faking it, but he let me in anyway. People sometimes want you to fake it just so they can sell a few more beers. In life and in business, there are a lot of moments like this. I was going to make an orgasm joke here, but that was already taken. In life and in business, there are a lot of moments like this. From using photos that make you look slightly better than you really do on Hinge, to Paul Turrell going along with the main Steve's exaggeration about Apple, because he wanted it to be true. Anyway, Oxford, if you wait for something to be 100% true, it may, to be, it may be too late. And if my speech isn't convincing, just remember you're all pretending to be happy here at Oxford while wishing you were at Cambridge. Thank you very much.